What is Repitch Elements? Well, Repitch Elements is a graphical note editor as opposed to a real-time tuning plugin. Now, what are some of the benefits with working with a graphical note editor? Well, as you can see over here, we have immediate visual feedback in terms of the entire sung performance. So each one of these blue notes over here represents a note block of a sung performance. These yellow areas in between represent all the transitions. And these green areas over here represent anything that's an unpitched voicing, such as sibilants, consonants, and breaths. And it's important to note that while we make our adjustments, these green areas are left unaffected. So let's go over some of the basics here. On the left, we have the ability to work with different scales. So for example, if I choose the scales option, I can either add or remove different scales. And then based on the scale that we've set, we also have the ability to set snapping. This will essentially remove any pitches that are not part of this relevant scale. So next up, we have the tools. So the primary tool would be the selector tool. We also have a center notes tool and we have a split tool. We also have a pan and zoom display tool. Now in terms of navigation, we basically have two scroll blocks over here. We can click, hold and drag this one in the bottom over here to move from left to right. And we can click, hold and drag this one on the right side to move from top to bottom. Now in terms of zooming, holding down the option and command modifiers on a Mac or alt and control on a PC will allow us to dynamically zoom and adjust our screen to fit the contents as we need. Now we can use shift and command on a Mac or shift control on a PC to click, hold and drag to reposition. We can also use this scroll wheel if we want to by doing this and the same would go for the vertical. And last but not least, we have the ability to adjust the vertical height of the waveforms. Now it's important to note that this isn't necessarily adjusting the amplitude, just a visual display. All right, so let's get started. Let's have a quick listen to this recorded performance. And under the drop down menu, I'm going to go to normal pitch range and choose no snapping notes to scale. Let's press play. Just cause I don't want you, birds. It doesn't mean I won't find another. I don't want to know your name. Don't need your dreams, no. You can keep your number. Now, in terms of working with the macros, this is a really great way to start. So if we click the drop down menu here and we go to the normal pitch range, you can see that we have snap notes to measured scale or snap notes to selected scale. Now, if you're not sure what scale your performance runs in, it'd be a good idea to use snap notes to measure scale. This will automatically analyze this and choose the most appropriate scale based on the recorded performance. Or if you happen to know the key, we can choose it directly from here. Now, in this case, I'm going to enable snapping. Let's go back to our macro menu. And in this case, I'm going to choose snap notes to selected scale. And let's have a listen to the results. Just cause I don't want you, birds. It doesn't mean I won't find another. I don't want to know your name. Don't need your dreams, no. You can keep your number. If we take a look at the performance over here and we zoom in, you'll notice that we have the pitch curve over here in light gray, and then we have a new pitch curve that is in solid white. The light gray represents the original pitch curve, and we can see the offset in terms of how much pitch correction was added based on this macro. Now, if I click any one of these pitch blocks, this gives us relevant information. You can see here, this is D4 at zero cents. I can right click this and I could reset this selected note. And then you can see here, if I highlight this selection, that this is set to actually minus 34. So that is the correction that was implemented. Now we can double click to snap any pitch to the nearest pitch center. In addition, if we hover our cursor at the very top of the pitch block, we can actually flatten out the modulation. And also another useful tool is holding down the alter option modifier and clicking on either side of any one of these pitches will allow us to adjust the drift. There's also another way that we can do this as well. Now, once you have your first initial pass done, it's a good idea to have a quick listen and take a look if there's any particular issues. Now, in certain cases, when a singer is performing, they may have a little bit of a legato between two phrases. And in those cases, a pitch block can be interpreted as one pitch, even though technically it should be split up. This is where the split tool comes in really handy. Let's zoom in on this one area, and I'm just gonna put a split in this one section where I think this should have been interpreted as two notes. Now I'm going to choose my selector tool. We will double click to snap this to the correct pitch and we will double click to snap this one to the correct pitch. Let's listen to the before and after on that. I'm gonna make a highlighted selection and use the forward slash key to play just this selected area. Just cause I don't want 
Also, another really useful feature is that we can double click from within the editor to play at any given point of time. Just cause I don't want you, babe. Double clicking again will stop it, or we could use the space bar. So I think that changes for the better. Let's move along a little bit. We also have the ability to use the center notes tool, which allows us to dial in a very specific amount of tuning in addition to adjusting the drift. So let's call up the center notes tool by either clicking in the GUI or by using the C key. And in this case, I could actually back off from 100% in addition to make changes to the drift of this particular note. So in this case, we've just smoothed this out a little bit, and then I could choose exactly how much tuning I want to apply. You, babe. Okay, that sounds good. Again, let's move along. We'll go back to our main selector tool, and let's see if there's any other issues. Uh, this might be another case where the drift tool and the center notes tool might be useful. Let's have a listen to this transition. I'm going to highlight the selection and press the forward slash key. I won't find another. In this case, I actually want to highlight this one and let's choose the center notes tool. Let's first of all adjust the drift. I want to kind of smoothen this out. And then in this case, we could actually back off from 100% a little bit and let's see if we can get a natural sounding result here. I won't find another. Perfect. Now let's listen to that in context of the entire track. We will do our before. Just cause I don't want you, birds. It doesn't mean I won't find another. I don't wanna know your name. Don't need your dreams, no. You can keep your number. And after. Just cause I don't want you, birds. It doesn't mean I won't find another. I don't wanna know your name. Don't need your dreams, no. You can keep your number. So that's using repitch elements. Our macros are a great starting point where we can either measure the scale and snap to it, or if you know the scale, you can add them in the very beginning and then use some of the manual tuning tools to modify and adjust the tuning as needed. For more information, be sure to visit the Synchro Arts website. That's it for this video, and we'll catch you in the next one.